Hello everybody, my name is Kia and here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create fully responsive layout inside the Figma using the wrapping feature and then variable in order to define different breaking points for the different sizes of the screen and devices. You're going to learn about how to create different variables and how to connect them to different properties of different objects inside the canvas. And then you're going to learn how to use the auto layout in order to wrap some item within a frame. And at the end, you're going to learn how to define mid and max width for a specific frame which gonna help us to create more realistic responsive behavior so get sure to watch this video until the end but before we start the video if you're new here I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel like this video check out the other videos as well now without further ado let's get started I'm gonna pick up the text tool and then create three text layers one for the caption one for the headline and one for the subline and then I'm gonna style them I'm gonna set the line height to 150 and then font style to semi bold. I'm going to make the headline bold and the size I'm going to choose 32 pixel. And at the end for the subline, I'm going to make the text size to 16 pixel and line height to 150 person. Now I'm going to select all the layers and then apply auto layout on them by using the combination key shift A. I'm going to name this frame info and then select all the child layers inside it and set the horizontal resizing behavior to fill container. Now from auto layout panel, I'm gonna set the gap between the elements to 16 pixel and the top button right and left margin to 16 pixel as well. Then I'm gonna open the Unsplash plugin in order to find an image and add it to this component. I'm gonna open up the plugin and find some random image and add it to my canvas by just clicking on it. I'm gonna resize the image to something more proper and then I'm gonna select all the layers once more and apply the auto layout using the combination key shift A. Now I select the image and set the horizontal resizing behavior to fill the container. Let's rename this frame to card and then add the corner radius 24 pixel. To see the corner radius, we need to check on this clip content and then I add the background color. Then I'm going to select all the text inside this frame and make them a bit darker that we can see them. To get sure that the length of the text is not going to make a problem for us, I'm going to use the truncation feature from the text panel as you can see here and define the max line to 2. That doesn't matter that how long the text inside the headline is going to be and uh, it's going to be limited to 2 line. Now I'm going to select the card frame and add the minimum width uh, for it. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to create a new variable and connect it directly uh, to this properties. I call it card min width uh, and I'm going to set the um, initial value to uh, 270 or 320. And then I'm going to open up the variable uh, panel and uh, rename the first mode to mobile. And then I'm going to create the new mode and I call it tablet. And then, and at the end, one mode for the desktop. These modes are basically our breaking points and we're going to define different values for specific properties regarding the size of the screen. Also, I add this variable to a new group and I call it card. I'm going to convert this frame to component, which is going to actually increase the maintainability uh, of my design file. And now I'm going to make three different instances of this component and select all of them and apply the auto layout on it by using the combination key shift A. Let's rename it to list of the uh, card. Now I set the auto layout mode to wrapping option, which is the new feature and the gap between the element 24. Now, if I resize this frame, you can see that how this frame wrapping the items. Now I select all the instances once more and the set the horizontal resizing behavior to fill. And now we have this fully responsive behavior, which is kind of really cool to see in the Figma. Do not forget that you have to set the min width for the uh, child element inside this frame. Otherwise, the wrapping option is not going to work. You can see here that I define a different breaking point already uh, in my file and I add a different section for different sides of the screen. Now I'm going to add a frame to the first section, uh, which is the desktop one. 
and apply the auto layout on this frame. And then I'm gonna set the min width. And again, directly, I'm gonna create a new variable and connect it to the min width of this frame. And I call it frame min width. And this time I'm gonna define the initial value to 980. And then I create the variables. Now I'm gonna define also the max width for this frame. And again, directly, I'm gonna create a new variable and connect it to this uh, properties. And I'm gonna call it frame max width. And for the max width, I'm gonna define it 1920 or something like this. Now I'm gonna open up the variables panel. And as you can see, we have max and min width for different modes, mobile, tablet, and desktop. I'm gonna set the uh, max width for the tablet to uh, 900. 80 and a minimum uh, width to 640. For the mobile, I will set the max width to 640 and minimum 320. I'm gonna select this section and then switch the mode uh, to uh, desktop and once more set the horizontal and vertical size and behavior of the frame. Now I'm gonna copy paste the list that we made before here and then set the horizontal resizing behavior to fit the container and uh, of course align it in the center. Now you can see this responsive behavior when I'm resizing the parent frame and I'm not able to make it bigger and smaller than mean and max width. Now I'm gonna drag it inside the next section and set the mode for this section to tablet and you can see immediately how the frame is changing. And then for the last section, I'm gonna set the mode to mobile, but don't forget that you need to get sure that you're using this variable inside the uh, section in order to be able to change the mode. And now I'm copy pasting all the frames again once more in different section, and you can see how immediately uh, the new values for these properties are applying on them. We can also define the max width for the uh, card list frame. As you can see here, I also make a new uh, frame for it. Uh, this is basically gonna be the max width for our layout. I'm gonna set it to 980 and uh, create this variable. This is gonna be same for a whole different mode. And now if I resize it, you can see that the uh, card list frame is not going to get bigger than 980. Let's set it again to center. Uh, and that's what exactly we wanted to have. We can go even one step further and define different gaps between the elements based on the breaking point. I'm gonna make a new variable for it and I name it uh, gap. And then uh, here you can see from the variables panel, I can define different uh, sizes for or different values uh, based on the uh, mode that they exist. And you can see the result here. Of course, we can define more variables and connect it to different properties of the element that exists inside this uh, layout to create more responsive behavior or more customized uh, behavior of each element in different breaking point. But in this video, I'm not gonna go further. That was basically everything that I wanted to share with you in this video. There's only one point I would like to mention. At this very moment, we can kind of design the responsive layout inside the Figma in design mode. But when it comes to playing uh, the demo or kind of see the prototype inside the preview mode, still there is a lack of uh, this feature that we can feel and see this responsiveness also there. As a Figma user, I really like to kind of see this feature uh, that when we design something responsive, uh, the end user also can see it in the preview mode. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment for me. I'm really trying to read all your comments and think about them, try to respond to you. So if you have any question, feel free to leave a comment for me uh, and I will try to kind of come back to you as soon as possible. Let's learn together. See you in the next video.